A very good evening, if you just joined us uh, for the Common Cup semi final uh, here at Tagoric Park between the hosts, St Austell, and their long time rivals and good friends, the Weybridge Camels. As you can see, Chris Ashwin um, about to kick off with St Austell in the change strip of blue and white, uh, playing from right to left. The referee tonight is Ian Morgan. That's Adam Blackboard, takes the ball cleanly. Adam, of course, is the uh, camel skipper this evening. And so we moved some charge down by Mark Vine, who's unusually playing in the back row this evening. He's playing six. There he is making a tackle. Time is just after half past seven, and this game will be played, already is being played under lights. Uh, but it will be getting dark soon. That's Danny Thomas. Lovely kick there, but I think it was by Ben Johnson. He's wearing 17 but playing fullback. So, although uh, be, please be aware that I get one or two of the names wrong, uh, that's because they're not wearing the numbers as per the programme. Uh, number 20, I think, is Aidan Cullis, uh, but we will see. That uh, call cool, must have been touched in flight because it's a Weybridge throughout line out and taken beautifully by Ben Thomas off the top. But he just nudged it forward. The so referee says we'll have the first scrum of the game. Ian Morgan, player, coach, now referee. That's a very good scrummage by St Austell. And just what they needed early on. And Chris Ashman looks for the safety of touch. And he just trickles the ball in, but only goes as far as Ben Johnson, who might have had his foot in touch when he hit the ball. Now you can hear there's a big crowd here tonight. I'm guessing, look at it, looking at it. Probably 500 people, which is wonderful. And they're making his debut. Tonight, uh, was an Oslo hooker. It was Pete Harris, recently turned 18. Came through the uh, junior section, of course. Mark Vine off the top. Nice yeah. <laughs> player, coach Carl Marriott. And the ball looks to me like, yeah. Turned over there. I'm not sure who it is. Could be so pretty. This is Danny Thomas. It's 
chance for um, Sean Hartley, the Camels hooker, hit his man first time, which he clearly does. That's Anthony Knight. I think he's been pinned for being offside. Yeah, you can see that. So perhaps the first chance for points this evening with no. Danny Thomas decides if we're going to play an attacking game, he's going to kick for the corner. Despite only being about. No, he's going the other way. Have a move. Ben Johnson having a disagreement with Matt Shepard. Matt playing in the centre tonight. Um, this season he's played uh, either fullback or fly half. Uh, but Chris Washam is playing at 10. And Connor Iwudzi was injured at the weekend in the game against Bridgewater. Um, so Shep fills in as he often does where he's needed. Pete Harris fights Mark Vine again. It's an also look to get the rumble in the moor. That's Cab Boyer, the first chance ever run. Looking to make the outside break, but he's well stopped there by Will Pongeli. So Joe Pretty made the tackle. Blackmore, he got mad and ball. Adam Blackmore hits him very hard, but I think the referee's going to take them back for an early offence. He was playing advantage. And I do believe if you're not already given over, the 50-50 draw is going around the Chris Ashburn steps one, man steps another, and he sails through. Matt Shepard adds two. So after just eight minutes, try for Chris Ashwin, converted by Matt Shepard, puts an Austal seven points um, in the lead. It's Danny Thomas to restart. Looks very high, in fact, and Adam Blackmore got there at the same time as Joe Warner, but Joe Warner stole the ball. See from Cav's reaction, he wasn't happy with the kick. He's he sliced it, and there will be a line out just inside an officer 22 attacking line out to Weybridge. That's hooker Aidan Cullis to throw. Nicely taken there, and Cullis comes around on the loop, swats off his opposite number, keeps the ball. That's number 13, Joe Pretty. Yeah. Uh, referee's uh, bringing them back for a penalty. I don't know whether that's four from here. Danny, Danny Thomas showed uh, Weybridge's intent early on. Uh, he went for, uh, there was a kickable penalty, he went for touch, and I think he's going to do the same again. As soon as uh, Mark Vine is okay, he's probably with the one forward that Slostal would not want to lose. Uh, he tends to be worth his weight in gold in the line out for his young Mark.
taken off the top by Adam Blackmore this time and Weybridge look to get a rumble on which they do it looks to me that's a really good attacking and referee points to try Jacob Johns that's number 17 which on the programme is Matt Ballard it's certainly not Matt Ballard uh, difficult kick from there left footed gives it a little clout but pulls it across the front of the post Uh, 30 minutes played, the score is St Austell 7, Weybridge 5. And Chris Ashman, the try scorer, gets the game back underway. Taken by Adam Blackmore. And helped out by Ben Humber, long time servant, both of them actually, for, for Weybridge. Well cleared, but the referee was playing advantage and decided that wasn't enough, so he's bringing them back for a penalty. Uh, difficult to know what it's for, I didn't see it. Which gives Danny Thomas the chance to uh, perhaps make more ground, and in this occasion, of course, Camels will keep the ball. So Camels hook is Sean Hartley, ready to throw again. He's mixed it up. This time he goes back to Adam Blackmore. And that was Rupert Edwards unable to hold on. So the referee bring him back for a scrummage. On the halfway line. There's an Austral front row of Hugh Newt, Pete Harris and Charlie Nicholson. Uh, against Christian Cotton, Sean Hartley and Aidan Cullis for the Camels. Oh, that's a, uh, resets as a ref, wasn't hooked. Once again apologies if I get players named wrong. Uh, they're not wearing the same numbers as the programme. Experience you knew playing loose head tonight. Difficult guard to scrimmage against. And ben Johnson will be quite pleased with that because uh, he made good ground. Harris once again goes to Vyan and goes around to take the ball saying to get them all rolling and once it's moving it's very difficult to defend if you bring it down it's always a penalty you're going to get men there in numbers As you can see there, there's Jane Maunder, who's lifted off his feet. Um, helped out by Mark Vine and Danny Tyrrell's around the other side, searching for the ball. That's Carl Marriott once again, who does that so well, makes a hard yards, keeps the ball, uses Hugh Newt, takes two to stop him. <laughs> uh, 
That's Cab Boyer and Ben Plummer with the ball there. The referee says uh, he held on. Really lovely contesting for the ball there by number 17. I'm not sure who it is. Could be uh, Ben Thomas. Anyway, it gives chance uh, for Danny Thomas to uh, clear his lines. Doesn't find touch, and Matt Shepard makes good yardage. Chris Ashman decides to play safe. It only goes as far as Owen Wilson. Yeah, it looks very much like uh, Danny Terrell's overcooked that. Ah, well and said, uh, action replay please. <laughs> I'm very certain nothing will come of it. Hopeful they've got to try, haven't you? Uh, but under the new laws play this season, that means it will be a top out from behind the post. Goes just as far as Cab Boyer. And ben Plummer has a chance to straighten. But he's well tackled. Not with his usual centre partner tonight, that Conroy Woods, who was injured in Saturday's game. But Matt Shepard will do the job for you. That's Chris Ashman, and once again, has a little run. That's probably a third or fourth time. Likes to take men on, then keep the ball alive. Terrell to Shepherd. He has a look. But he's well caught by number six, Ben Thomas. Anthony Knight takes route one. Again. Ball didn't go to hand, but Ben Plummer did really well. Pick up and make the yardage, supported by Matt Shepard. You can hear Danny Turrell complaining about hands in there, but Terry Priest's play on. There's Charlie Nicholson, the first chance to have a run with the ball. Deep inside, Campbell's 22. Kick and intended for Alec Alwellen, who gets there, keeps the ball alive, supported by Max Zach Morley, and there's a knock on there. I don't know if the referee saw it, but I think he might have done. But he was playing advantage anyway, so he's going to bring them back. I think he's indicated for collapsing them all, so um, it will be a penalty Sonostal about seven or eight metres inside the Camels 22. So with 23 minutes gone, the score remains St Austell 7, Wabes Camels 5 and Matt Shepard has the chance to uh, extend the lead with a shot at goal from probably, I'm guessing about 20 metres out, slightly right of the post. Perfect conditions for kicking really, very little wind, nice cool evening. Perfect condition for a game. Couldn't be better, local derby. Looks like the stand is pretty full and there are lots of people around the outside of the ground. I'm guessing there must be more than 500 people here. Tips, strokes up, strokes it, add to the three. Beautiful two-handed basketball catch there by Cal Marriott. He's got such good hands, that guy. 
very experienced. And Zach Morley, one of the new boys this season, has impressed everybody. So not finding touch, but keeping the ball. As you can see, your referee wants a quick word with Adam Blackmore and Chris Ashwin, the skippers tonight. I think it's about, come on guys, are you here to play rugby? Sensible thing to do. No need for it. It'll be a waiver scrum and Sinos will get a really good shove on there. And it wheels. Referee says, yep, yeah, that's a penalty Sinos. Danny Terrell looks to go quickly, but he's held up. I think more likely that uh, they'll ask Black Shepherd to kick for the corner or even for goal. Yeah, he's going for goal. Coming up to the half hour mark. Score is Sonostal 10, Rabies and Camels 5. And Matt Shepherd has the opportunity to uh, nudge Sonostal slightly further into the lead. Difficult kick, as you can see, just by the halfway line. But the conditions for kicking are rather good. Giving it some clout. He's got the distance, but he's pulled it just to the right. Now Danny Thomas to restart from his 22. There's another number 10 who loves to run. Hugh Newt can't hold it, neither can Zach Morley under pressure. Uh, but Jacob Johns gets there first. It's a lovely kick and um, Cowboy has no option but to give it some hoof and it's uh, fielded by fullback Ben Johnson and the Camels go open looking for the round again taken cleanly um, I think by Fraser Nottle that's the first chance I think Fraser had to uh, have the ball this evening there he is. Exceptional pace. Love to see him uh, back from injury. He's had a shoulder problem um, for a lot of part of the season. So after Matt Shepard's clearance, Camels will have a line out. Pretty much on halfway. As you can see, big crowd here tonight. Local derby. Two very, very similar sides both are uh, doing well in their leagues in fact uh, camels have won every single game they've already run western counties west uh, with four games remaining that's ben johnson showing his pace excuse the pun and camels are building up ahead of steam here Johnson nudges to the corner and it looks like the ball might go too far which it did but the referee was playing advantage for offside so Camels have a penalty just on to the 22 Tony Thomas will head tap it in the corner and the line out just over 10 metres out It was from from this position after just eight minutes where uh, Camel scored a lovely try from exactly this line out, driving more. So it's also unable to stop them and you can be fairly sure that's where they're going to try again. They go to Blackmore. 
the referee says it wasn't straight, so Sonos will have a choice. And they're probably going to opt for a scrummage because it's a, an area where they've just had the edge so far this evening. Good scrummage in front of the row there. Charlie Nicholson playing tight head. Who knew? Loose head tonight. Uh, with Pete Harris making his debut. I think there's a contrast of hairstyles in the front row as well. Danny Tyrrell puts in. I have to say I have no idea what that was for. I can't imagine why he gave away a penalty if he'd already won the ball, but um, I'm not the referee. Adam Blackmore has a little run. S stopped by Carl Marriott, but uh, it could be changed the ball. But not fairly to the referee, you dive straight over the top. And he points at Jacob Jones. Now that's a real opportunity for Matt Shepard to relieve the pressure. And you can see from Matt's uh, reaction, he's a bit disappointed with that because he hasn't found touch, but they've all gone a long way been picked up by Ben Johnson who's looking for support gets it in the form of uh, Owen Wilson well went to ground but uh, it wasn't not forward so Danny Thomas comes away he's looking for support once again he's such an elusive runner but he just loses the ball in contact and the referee will bring him back for a scrimmage some of the Sonostal faithful turn out tonight, as you can see, woolly hats and scarves, lovely to see. One of the things that uh, Sonostal have missed this season has been uh, local derbies, they in the league with uh, no other Cornish clubs. In fact, the nearest fixture was in Plymouth, and having Weybridge to come and play here is a real treat, and obviously really good for both clubs financially, so uh, in a great competition. Terrell feeds. There's an awful big first tackle, but he's caught by Adam Blackmore. Danny Tyrrell dances left, right, feeds Ben Plummer. He shows what he does so well. And Chris Ashman dips under the first tackle. Um, well, Match over dummies and goes, but uh, there's no contact there. He's playing advantage though. Referee clearly indicated. Carl Marriott goes first. And you can see from here there was a, a knock on. The referee's playing advantage. So Charlie Nick plays on. He's well tackled there by uh, Richard Bright. That's Joe Maunder, another lad who graduated with the Colts. Bit of a find this season. And Fraser Nottle gets around the outside. But as you can see, he just lost the ball as he went over the line. The referee says no. He'll bring them back because he was playing advantage. Perhaps another opportunity for Shep to uh, take three points as we head closer to half time with, well, I make it about three or four minutes to go, although there has been stoppages for injuries.
the uh, referee indicated there there were two offences, so the Sosla had the opportunity to choose where, where they want the penalty to take, and Matt Shepard has gone over on the right-hand side, and I think he's indicated that he's going to kick the goal. Yes, he has. With Harto approaching, Sonosta will keen to get more of a lead than they have already, because they know this game is a long, long way from over. Both sides have got impressive benches this evening, and you'd be fairly sure that they'll be used early in the second half. 10-5, if Shep kicks this, uh, we'll move on to 13. It's an Arsenal 13, Weybridge Camels 5. So Danny Thomas to restart once again. Lovely take once again. Carl Marriott showing how it's done. Eyes on the ball, hands in the air. Higher than everybody else. And you can see the touch judge says uh, you were outside the 22 and the ball went directly in. Uh, Sean Hartley the throw. Goes this time to Jacob Johns at the front of the line. And once again, Camels look to get a rolling ball using their big forwards. And Tony Thomas knew there was an offence committed, so he had to run himself. Um, been a whole series of penalties, particularly for offside. Referee Ian Morgan has been very hot on that this evening for both teams. You think by now they might have learned. Sean Hartley once again to throw. He goes to Blackmore. And once again, Camels get an opportunity for attacking Moore. Very close to Lossell's line. Looking to get back to pretty much level pegging just, pegging just before half time. They keep the ball, they've got it going forward. And very difficult to stop. The referee says that's truck and trailer, I think. Yeah, and you can see when he had the ball, he separated from the rest and then joined, rejoined. Bit of a let off, Horst and Hostel there. And you can be fairly sure they want to win the scrummage, their own ball, and clear the touch in the hope that uh, the referee will blow the whistle by half time. They've been under pressure for the last 10 minutes. Pretty solid scrummage. Probably the one area where uh, Sonosco just had the edge throughout the game. Danny Tyrrell says that's enough. Referee Ben Morgan throws for half time, and the score at half time is Sonosco 13, Weybridge Camels 5. So Danny Thomas about to get the second half underway with Camels trailing by 13 points to 5. Um, but one score will soon change that. Taken very well there by Pete Harris, who uh, has impressed. He's only 18. But Camel's come away with the ball. And Joe Pretty is tackled and holds on. He's played well for it so far, Joe Pretty. He's uh, tackled well, kicked well. Referee Ian Morgan has been uh, penalised so many times, I have lost count of number of penalties really for offside and for holding on to the ball. He tries to keep the game flowing as best as he can. So Matt Shepard with a clearance to touch. Likes to do a little jig just before he does it. Pete Harris probably goes to Mark Vine, which he does indeed. Chris Ashwin comes on the crash ball. Uh, the referee says no, you have to pass the ball backwards. You can see from here that uh, uh, 
Camels have made at least two changes with Jack Scott coming in at tight head and Matt Ballard to hooker. And it looks as though Richard Trelevin also is playing number eight. There he is. Knocked on. Pressure from the scrummage, told. Unable to keep hold. Bit more of a challenge now. There's two really big guys there. Hugh Newt playing against Jack Scott. They played against each other many times before. In fact, uh, in the Cornwall Cup final, when St. Austell beat Weybridge for the only time in their history where they won the Cornwall Cup, uh, they, can, they competed there. And in fact, Hugh Newt scored two tries that day. What a superstar. So the scrummage will be more difficult, I think it's fair to say. As you can see, Camels get a move, a nudge on. And there's our, our Welland as a run, looking for Cav Boyer, who gets man and ball. Uh, he does it again. Matt Shepard aiming to put the ball in the corner. For an attacking line out. It's there. And so far, on probably half the time he's throwing the ball, he's been very accurate, very good. He's gone straight to Mark Vyan, who is the obvious line out jumper for St. Austin again. St. Austin blessed with two very tall guys in Vyan and Maunder. They get them all moving forward and the idea is to keep it moving forward because if it stops you have to bring the ball out. And you'll see the referee indicate Ben Plummer adds his weight. It's hard to say who's got the ball. There's Fraser Knockle joins in and it's close, very close. Danny Tyrrell goes wide. It's Chris Ashwin who steps first man but gets caught. And Matt Shepard gets caught as well and you can see that uh, over the ball really quickly Really lovely defending by Camels there. Big pressure. And Camels have a look. Too quick for their own good. Forward pass there. No Danny Tyrrell to put in. So Arsenal scrum about five metres outside. Camels 22. And the scrummage isn't going to be much more evenly contested than they were in the first half. You can see from that. Two all piece, Ben Plummer, who takes route one. Does that so well, keeps the ball. There's our well and not had much chance to show his paces today. He's a difficult man to bring down. Good close support. That's offside, you can see it from here. He's playing advantage. Matt Shepard beats a couple. Danny Troll looks one way, goes the other. And I will, and has another chance. There's Anthony Knight. Chris Ashman who scored the try in the first half. He finds a match up, but he's caught by Jack Scott, treats him a bit like a rag doll. He's probably twice his weight. The referee is indicating that he went over the top there and he's looking to his pocket and I think it's Jack Scott. He's been given a yellow card. Well, sealing off, preventing the ball coming out. Gives the opportunity for Matt Shepard to try and add three points for the penalty. Pretty debate going on about whether he should go for the corner or go for a penalty. And I think uh, Carl Marriott said, yeah, let's take the points, please. There's Archie Bees. Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing some of him later on, really talented youngster.
None of them are easy, but um, that's fairly much in front of the post, probably 18 metres out. And Matt adds the three to move the score onto St Austell 16, Weybridge 5. As they start, as we look to restart, Hugh New and Anthony Knight are replaced by Dan Joe. And once again, Carl Marriott shows how you take the ball from a kick off. This Ashburn boots a bit, only gets as far as Danny Thomas, who will always look to run, which he does. He does very well. As replacement, Matt Ballard. Long time. Oh, that's Matt Ballard. No, offside to the referee. I lost count of how many times both teams have been offside at the ruck. They've been just so diff so eager to defend in their faces, they're infringing all the time. I've got to apologise if I got um, names wrong. Once again, the players aren't wearing the numbers. Some of the players aren't wearing the numbers that are advertised in the programme for all sorts of reasons. So that is either, by my guessing, either Jake Grubb or Joe Pretty. I think it might be Jake Grubb. Left footed. And the crowd goes silent. Yeah. Right through the middle. It's an Arsenal 16, Babies Camels 8. Chris Ashwin sort of scuffs it and restart there. It didn't seem to do any harm. Don't forget Jack Scott. So Wavy's playing for 14 minutes at the moment. Jack Scott in the bin for sealing off at the Rock. That's a good kick. Eventually, he'll be tired from playing in the forwards. I'm sure that Carl Marriott can play fullback. Danny Thomas, he might be the smallest man on the pitch, but my goodness, he can shift. Charlie Nick, play, uh, played the 50th time for Saints recently. Love to see him playing so well. That's Camp Boyer. And Will Bengali catches Fraser Nottle. I think he felt that. There's Matt Ballard. Okay, so Adam Blackmore taking beauty off the top. That's <laughs> Richard's 11. He lost the ball in contact and then it went forward, so uh, the reference say scrummage. So it's an awesome scrummage right on the halfway line. Danny Tyrrell puts in. And you imagine with Jack Scott off the field, so Austin will have an advantage there, which they certainly do. And they keep going forward, keep moving, playing for a penalty. Hasn't come yet, so Carl Marriott picks up. But he's well caught by Adam Blackmore there. Oh, sorry, it wasn't Adam Blackmore, it was Owen Wilson. Oh. It's Dan Joe with pretty much his first touch of the ball, round his ankles, unable to hold on. Dan has got two cracking tries at the weekend against Br uh, Bridgewater away. The two sides who are both doing very well in their respective leagues, there have been a lot of handling errors this evening. I'm guessing it's because uh, that it, uh, it is cold this evening. You can see from uh, the number of people wearing hats and coats uh, out there, there's some cold fingers and hence you know, a lovely scrummage for us at Austell and not done by Camel, so there'll be 
a second scrummage, but this time with Danny Tyrrell to put in. And referee Ben Morgan. He does a good job of talking to the players all the way through the game. You can hear him very clearly. You can see Andy Inch is on the ball. There's Danny Tyrrell. He's got to look himself. And he's got support outside. Which he overthrew and Fraser Nottle couldn't take it. It was a free kick at the scrummage there. And Matt Shepard unable to take that. So the referee's going to have another scrummage just there for the knock on. Aaron Wilson puts in. Danny Tyrrell tries his best to take him before he kicks it, but he doesn't do it. That's a lovely kick. The Cowboy has a watch to take it directly into touch. So Jack Scott has returned from his short rest, 10 minute break, to give Camels a full lineup supplement ju uh, just as they have an attacking opportunity about 10 metres from Tolosa line. Matt Ballard to throw. So far he's hit Adam Blackmore I think three times. Four times. And the Camels look to get a rolling ball on again, which they score so well from early in the first half. And they get going at some pace. Very difficult stop. Very difficult stop. First right, then left. Referee Ben Morgan says somebody came in at the side. I can't see who it was, but he's having a quick chat with Chris Ashwin. In the meantime, Camels have another penalty. Danny Thomas wants to get right in the corner. Five metres out. And Camels once again. Very close, very close indeed, right up on the line. Ben Mo Ian Morgan has a good close look, he says no. Held up, you can see from here. I think it was Jacob Johns. And so Oscar would be delighted with that, the opportunity to drop out. Chris Ashburn has a sort of um, attack defensive kick. The ball just rolls into touch and it will be a camel's line out about 15 meters out you can see from that uh, referee and Morgan indicating that I think it was Ben Thomas who took the ball, but um, he was there was a player in front of him who was accidentally offside. So it would be a colossal scrummage. And then in the meantime, Danny Tyrrell has taken leave, and C.J. Boyce has come on. Camels get a good nudge on in that scrum. The ball's at the feet with Carl Mario, who probably will pick up, and he loses it. Owen Wilson takes the ball but can't quite make the line. Perfect, lovely opportunity here. Oh, that's a lovely kick. That's a lovely kick. Well defended by Fraser Nottle, who turned around, turned himself inside out to get to the ball. and also will be absolutely delighted not to concede any points for the last 10 minutes. Camels have had so much possession, so much attacking opportunities. Not quite there to put it away. CJ Boyce nudges it into touch. So once again, on to Nossel's 22, just inside. Matt Ballard has a chance. So move off the training part there, Richard 11 coming in at pace. 
beating two men. And Andy Inch comes away with the ball after what looked like a knock on, but the referee played the advantage and Chris Ashburn puts it into touch. So as we enter the final quarter of the game, just over 20 minutes played in the second half, the score remains 16-8 as an hostel. But uh, Raiders Campbells are certainly not finished by some way. They've had massive the possession. And Danny Thomas looks one way, keeps the ball. And he's helped out by Matt Ballard. Wayne Wilson has a look himself. Gets support from Big Jack Scott. Uh, Camels have an overlap, they're looking to use it. But, um, luckily there, I think it was Jake Rudd to Joe Pretty, and the ball went forward. Coming on and great. Uh, Weybridge will be looking to get a nudge on here. And I wouldn't be surprised if Lutcher 11 picks up and runs. That's exactly what he does. A real opportunity here. Five metres out. At pace. It's also fighting for the ball. sure what referee Ian Morgan is saying. I think he's bringing them back for an advantage uh, over there. So left footed from the far touch line, uh, Jake Grubb, I believe, attempts to add the conversion, gives it some welly. What a lovely kick. So as Chris Ashman comes to restart, the score is to 16, Weybridge Camels 15, and I make it about 15 minutes to go. As you can hear, both the home and the way supporters getting behind their teams. One point, it's always going to be close this, and it might come down to either one piece of skill or one lovely kick. But I have to say that uh, Slotto have been under the cosh for the last 20 minutes. Make another change in the front row there. I think that's um, Brandon Hack coming on. So Charlie Nicholson has had a rest, or having a rest. and hoops it down the field and Camboya does the same thing but only as far uh, as Ben Johnson he replies with some interest what a fabulous kick that is you can see from the response how pleased his forwards are take it and they get a roll and rumble on right up to the line right up to the going to be difficult to stop this
Referee Ben Morgan's right there looking for the touchdown. He says no. No, he was held up. I think that was Brandon Hacker underneath there. Ben Humble was the last man to get up um, with um, Adam Blackmore. Are still desperately hoping to keep hold on to their lead, one point lead. But as you can see, the Campbells now have an edge in the scrummage. Carl Marriott brings it away. And CJ Bush will look to get this off the park, make as many yards as he can. And Chris Ashwin does so. Taken once again by Adam Blackmore. Camels go wide. doing the dirty work there and he might even have come away the ball I think it's Brandon Hack stole it yes, they would be so pleased to relieve this pressure and once again Matt Ballard has an attacking liner opportunity on to Nossus 22 and he goes to Adam Blackmore who this time oh that's really beautifully done <laughs> Owen Wilson Grub. Takes three men to stop him. And the referee's bringing them back for, I think, might be a penalty. If it is, it's certainly a kickable. And it's an opportunity for uh, Weybridge to take the lead for the first time in the game. And the referee's going to his pocket, the yellow card, which I think is showing to Joe Maunder. He certainly is. make it four to five minutes remaining and if he kicks this Jake Grubb then Camels will lead for the first time 16 points to 18 fairly easy kick for him not a murmur around the ground This could put Camels into the final. Oh. Hit the post. How close can it get? Chris Ashman doesn't find touch. He only finds Matt Ballard and uh, Will Pengelly, who is his uh, dangerous runner, scored three tries against the Arsenal two seasons ago in one game. Campbell's retained possession. That's a lovely tackle that's under the bar by Dan Job. I think there's an element here. <laughs> Take your time. Crossing in the centre, so Matt Sheffield's going to, I'd put a mortgage on it, 
knocked this into touch with the Nossel line out. Miles Davy to throw this time. Miles has been on for a few minutes, I should add it. Former Camels player himself. And of course the Sonosal skipper. You can hear the crowd. Oh. Uh, Fraser Nottle has a run, but he gets caught. Manages to keep the ball. There's Miles Davy who will take some stopping, always does. Andy Inch, we haven't seen much of tonight, but he does all the donkey work. As does he, Carl Marriott, hit by his opposite number. Adam Blackmore hit really hard, actually. No, you can't do that, says Rev. You stay there. That's Fraser North with the opportunity. Beats the first man and the second. But he's caught by Matt Ballard, who attempts it. He does and steals the ball off him. And I think he might have been offside. Well, with about two or three minutes remaining, there will only be one or two, but one or two opportunities left in this game. And the Sonosta would probably, tactically, because knowing Carl Marriott's now, so you'll probably want to play up here, and either the lot for a scrummage, or maybe not because they're all man short, or they'll put it in the corner and attempt to capture the line out for the drive. That's exactly what Match is going to do. Miles Davy to throw. Now put money in, I'm going to Mark Lyon. No, he goes to Kelly Marriott. I just lost some money. Now CJ Boyce at the back there is over the ball. And he gets support from Ben Plummer and Anthony Inch. That's Brandon Hack, comes away with it. Weybridge desperate to get their hands on this ball. Yeah, the three blows the whistle. What a fabulous game. Hard to believe. It was always going to be close, but 16 points to 15 is the final score. So, Austin 15, Weybridge Camels 15.